good time I feel alive and the welcome to word up a fun mad lib style word-based collaboration between <clears throat> powerful performing artists amazing San Diego guests and you right now watching and shaping the way that this whole thing turns out with what you say in the in the comments section of this video so thank you for being here happy early halloween uh, my name is laura and i'm your host for this evening and uh, i want to real quick before we even do anything just say that we're going to have an opportunity for you to participate in a makeup challenge today so if you're interested right now get up go get your makeup bring it to wherever you are or bring your phone or your tablet or whatever over to a mirror and all your goods and get set up in case you want to participate. If you're on the fence and you're like, am I going to do it? Am I not going to do it? Are you doing anything else for Halloween right now? Like <laughs> you could do it, do it, do it. It's going to be so fun. And I can't wait to have you join us on this very fun and messy adventure because today we're diving into the storytelling art form of character makeup. And so you may remember our amazing guests from a couple of weeks ago when we didn't get to do the whole workshop with them. So I am so excited that we get to collaborate with them all the way through today. So here to kick us off with a demonstration of our art form, character makeup, is our featured guest artist for this evening, Alberto Albi Alvarado, putting on the finishing touches of his Halloween makeup. Let's check it out. Thank you so much, Alby, for that demonstration of makeup and character makeup, especially in the Halloween spirit. Um, I'm so excited that we get to, to officially meet Alby again in just a moment. Um, but in the meantime, I want to take this opportunity to encourage everyone to check in the comment section. Um, as always, part of what makes this evening what this evening is, is you and your words, hence the name Word Up. So go ahead and share some words around this check-in question for today. How are you? There's a lot going on. How do you feel today? And it's almost Halloween. We've got a holiday. We've got the election next week. Vote, vote, vote. There's so much happening right now. Um, so just share. I know usually we have like a, a, a a kind of roundabout way of asking this question, but right now I'm just asking you, how are you? How do you feel today? Go ahead and share that with us in the in the comment section to this video. And uh, and as you're getting warmed up there, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'm gonna, let, let's go ahead and officially meet our featured guest artist for this evening, right? Uh, however, I'm not gonna do it myself. I brought in some very special backup to help me officially introduce Albi this evening. Here to help me is our incredible guest, Anishka Lee Skaripa. Anishka, will you, will you pop up on screen and give me a hand to officially introduce Albi this evening? Yes, Albi is one of my favorite people in the whole wide world. It would be my absolute honor. Um, Albi um, Alberto, Albi Alvarado, is a local 706 IATSE union makeup artist, educator, and wig technician based out of San Diego, California. He got his start in makeup and wigs while studying for his bachelor's in theater arts at San Diego State University. Since then, he has been fortunate enough to work on to have worked on countless photo shoots. Um, for San Diego Opera, 
several Broadway touring productions, and in television and theater. His skill set includes knowledge of theatrical makeup, high def makeup, bridal, and street makeup. On his free time, he enjoys attending makeup conventions to further his craft and spending time backstage in the theater, where the quote magic happens. He is passionate about his craft, and he loves to give back to the community by educating young, unexposed audiences to his craft. Please give a warm welcome to the one and only Albi Alvarado. Yay! Albi, welcome! <laughs> you look amazing. I'm so happy to have you. How are you doing? What are you up to these days? You know, just trying to stay sane during the pandemic. I take up gardening. Um, I play with makeup for fun. I paint in my garage different colors. You know, you just <laughs> keep it going. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what color? What colors have you painted your garage? No, I'm very what curious. Colors, is my garage not painted. It's literally every panel is a different color. Oh my gosh. I love that. I, I totally love kindergarten school. <laughs> oh, I love that. You've gone through a lot of training for this moment, all of elementary school. Oh my gosh. Albie, what? you know what I just realized? I I didn't even officially introduce Anishka. I didn't even officially introduce our, our San Diego community guest. It's like it's like it's like magic happened or something and it slipped out of my brain. This is so embarrassing. But Albie, since you're here anyway, would you do me a huge favor and help uh, me officially introduce Anishka this evening? Absolutely. You know, Nikki's <laughs> one of my uh, very good friends. She and I met at San Diego Opera when she was working there. Funny story. She fought me so hard tooth and nail because she has very fair eyebrows. And I suggested that she would fill them in, not to look like a different person, but just to you know, punch up who she is and how she looks already. She fought me tooth and nail, and that's one of the things she doesn't do <laughs> as part of her routine, and I love her for that. Uh, but let me give you a real bio. She's a dramatic soprano. Her name is Alishka Lee Scorepa. She's a cross-border musician creating work in the San Diego and Tijuana region. And her unique deconstruction of opera approach to art song and to opera is a product of her, her artisticness um, she just doesn't want to be like the institutions and the things that surround it, you know? She's inspired by a lifetime of connections and that she's experienced through music and performance. And she set out to create like her own version of what opera really is. And I think she's succeeding. So like, you better go ahead, eyebrow Nishi, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Woo, thank you very much for your help, Albie. <laughs> yeah. Um, We've already got like quite a lot of love going in the comments section for oh. for Anishka. People saying, "Hey, go off, Ms. Anishka." Uh, Omg, the best teacher. <laughs> there is some love coming in. So, thank you, everyone. <laughs> Um, and also thank you to the folks who checked in in the comments section. We've got some relaxed and excited for the weekend. We've got some nerves, some some fatigue, some nervousness about Tuesday. Um, a oh. whole lot, a whole lot going on. Uh, a lot, some 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 not knowing how to feel. But 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 thank you very much for sharing that with us. Uh, as as we set out on our character makeup adventure, we'll we'll see we'll see what feelings lie ahead for us. Um, but Anishka, oh. what have you been up to? What's what's the news with you? Um, well, I, you know, like I'll be trying to survive a pandemic, uh, doing my best, but in the middle of this pandemic, I have released my first single off the album that I'm going to release in January. Pacha, it's available on all streaming platforms. You can find it on YouTube. It's a really good time and it's super representative of this deconstruction of opera concept that I have. I think that you were playing it at the beginning of the show. And yeah, I love the art form and I want other people to experience it and love it too. And so listen, subscribe, like, follow and check it out because um, yeah, this is opera that is intended to just be enjoyed in any capacity anywhere. So yeah. Hey, and, I, and I've loved getting to listen to some of your tracks as we've been, you know, a couple of weeks ago getting ready and again this week. Um, so folks at home, if you, the, the music that you were listening to before the show started, some of those images are, are all the work of Anishka and Albi. So check them out. There's links in the caption to everything that we've talked about. Um, but we're going to we're going to jump into our mad lib real quick here as as Albi and I frantically get ready <laughs> and and Anishka. Um, no for it and you yourself get ready to put on some makeup so let's let's get some information from albie as as we embark on this 
Albie, will you uh, will you first define character makeup for us tonight? As our art form, what is it? I'm my honor, but I'm gonna give the ghetto definition. I'm not gonna give the like book definition, okay? Character makeup is something that, a tool we use to help an audience understand what's happening in the story or with the character. Um, and it's not to condescend the audience, right? Like audiences are smart, they pick things up, but it's just a tool we use to further the story along. Just like you would use a costume or a wig or a lighting cue or a sound cue, right? So for example, if someone was poor, uh, maybe they're not as clean as someone who is rich. If someone is poor, especially in the period piece, maybe they're dirty because they can't afford, you know, to be clean like the rich people. Um, if someone in a tattoo, if someone in a show is meant to be more like rebel, maybe we put tattoos on them. So it's, it's I would say like it, there are hints we give the audience to better understand a story without condescending how smart they really are. Mm. And I think what's so interesting about what, what you're talking about and what we've, what we've spoken about um, about this is, is the idea of like stereotypes. Like you were just, like you were just kind of mentioning like this, this kind of full frontal first messaging that helps people get the story and is based off of something that's like purely visual and, and kind of subjective, which oh, is what's absolutely. so Absolutely. Cool you know, Laura, like the thing about character makeup is it is based on stereotypes, but sometimes it's, it's based on stereotypes to prove that what you see is not always what you get. You know, perception versus reality. You know, what, what we perceive and what really is, right? So if you see someone who looks, say, like a goth person, and, you know, people have general ideas in their head what that means and who that is. But one of my best friends in the whole entire world, too, actually, they're goth kids, and they're the kindest, sweetest people that would give the shirt off their back. But you don't know that necessarily based off how they look. Again, so it always goes back to perception versus reality. What's real? How do we want to be perceived? Do we care how we're perceived? And, you know, makeup is a way to express how we feel and it doesn't necessarily ever fit in one box. And I think that's what I really love about makeup. Mm, mm. Um, and you kind of already touched on it, but, but our theme, uh, the theme that we're exploring for today, perception versus reality. Um, what, what, what about this theme? What about, what about this idea made you want to bring it to the Word Up community this evening? You know, I have, between my husband and I, we have a lot of nieces, and it breaks my heart to think that young girls today have to look a certain way to be noticed or loved or appreciated. You know, a lot of it has to do with trends. Um, you know, the, for example, the contouring thing, Kim Kardashian made that super famous. Like, your nose is perfect the way it is. You don't have to contour it to look like everybody else because it defeats the purpose of being an individual. So to me, I think it's fun if you're on stage and you're creating a character to be perceived in a certain way on purpose versus reality, which is, you know, like, you're really not like that. You really don't have these features and that's okay. Especially with like Halloween coming up. Halloween is my favorite holiday of all time. The reason being is we get to be these characters who are not, and we want to be perceived a certain way on purpose. But I feel like the lines are starting to get blurred a little bit in real life between social media, mostly social media, now Zoom since the pandemic. And I wish that we would just find a better balance between the two. Mm. Mm. Well, thank well, you very much. Point to something I'll be about like, like women and makeup in particular is that there's so many stereotypes about like who you are and who you aren't if you wear makeup. And for a long time, I didn't think I could wear makeup because I felt kind of like a tomboy and I felt like it wasn't something for me. And then like, it turns out like, you don't have to be like Kim Kardashian and you can still wear makeup. You can still find your lane and like feel comfortable in who you are, you know? Mm, mm. And that was like, that was my own learning curve because I didn't grow up around that. I, I didn't grow up, my mom doesn't wear makeup. She doesn't, she, you know, she doesn't like do a lot of like hairstyles or anything. So it was kind of strange to me, but it was a world I wanted to explore and kind of create for myself. But then I felt almost like it, like it wasn't for me. And so it was like, mm. no, I'm, I want to make this my own. Mm. And I'm going to one up that Laura started interrupting yeah. that it's not just like girls, like, you know, boys, whether they're gay, straight, bi, non-binary, et cetera. Like 
if you want to look more well rested and you want to put a little bit of concealer, it doesn't change who you are. You know what I mean? Like, and it's okay. But there's been such a stigma against makeup. And I wish people realized that makeup is just makeup. Mm. It's for fun. If you use it as a tool to make yourself feel better, that's great. If you need to put on red lipstick to feel confident, you know, during the day, that's great. If you don't wear anything because you love how you are already, oh my God, God bless you. I wish I was you. <laughs> um, and I, I love how, how like all the things that you both are talking about with character makeup, there's the whole presumption of it's not real. It's, it's, it's just taking it, um, that taking that perception and and playing with it and making it something that can be intentionally um, haggard or or something else, which kind of leads us a bit to to our activity. Um, so here we go. <laughs> you, want we to, have, you want me to tap in, Laura, and see what we're gonna do? Uh, can I? I'll, I'll, I'll let me let me say like what that that it's not the same as we normally do, which is kind of what I already said. But basically, given that the premise is a Mad Lib, uh, the premise of a Mad Lib is plugging something into another finished art piece. We're doing that with character makeup. And thank you very much, Albie, for, for coming up with this idea for a way to make that possible through character makeup. What, what are we going to do today? You know, it's Halloween. I hope people at home are putting their makeup out in front of them to play with us. If you're not, that's okay. You can replay it later and play with us later. But I would really like to explore the idea of stereotypes, perception versus reality. What you see is not always what it gets. So we're gonna do, between me, Laura, and Nishi, we're gonna do three different types of witches, right? A staple to Halloween. And we're gonna use your guys' suggestions to create these looks. Remembering that how we look doesn't necessarily dictate who we are and how we are as people. Mm. Thank you. You don't have to convince um, my students that I'm a witch. Oh! <laughs> ah! <laughs> All right, students, oh, weigh in in the head. comment section. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, we're going to ask you guys some questions. You guys are going to help us answer these questions. And then you guys are going to kind of dictate who we become. And we hope at the end to have a conversation, uh, you know, to wrap it all up and to tie it all together that, you know, you may be going to school or working with someone who wears a crazy cat eye every day. That's fine. If it makes them feel better about themselves, that's fine. Maybe they use that to, because they want to be perceived more seriously, or they're insecure about how they look, and it makes them feel prettier. So we're going to be really kind in the comment section about how we approach this. Okay, uh, but you guys are going to help us along the way. Hey. So, so here's how it's going to work. It's going to look like other other weekly episodes in that we're going to give you some questions and you're going to respond in the comments section. And the ideas that you have about the questions that we're asking are going to inspire us and inspire anybody at home who's also doing their makeup um, to use that information and use that perspective to tell a story through character makeup. Happy Halloween! We're gonna we're gonna go for some some witches. We've got some some witch action um, with uh, you know. There's usually like three witches, right? For some reason, everything comes in threes. We're like three focus. Witches. Like hocus pocus, yeah. and they're not three of the same witches. Maybe they dress in all the same stuff, but maybe through their makeup, we get to know a little bit about what makes them each unique. So we've got our first question. That's going to be for everybody. Um, and you just basically, if you're doing this, this makeup challenge, if you feel like, well, this is kind of unstructured. Yeah. Yeah. You basically do what you want. <laughs> like if it's you get perfect, an answer. Makeup is an art and there's no rules. You know what I mean? There's no rules. Makeup is an art and we're going to have fun with this and keep it positive. Yes. Yes. Thank you very much, Albie. That is, that is one of our, one of our always rules in the comment section is you just got to keep it inclusive. It doesn't even have to be true. If you can't come up with an answer to something, yeah. um, make it up, use your imagination. So, uh, so we're going to go over this one question that applies for everybody. And then we're going to go down the line and, um, Anishka and Albie and I will all get specific questions that are going to feed into our kind of witch. So the first question is what color are you afraid to wear in your clothes or makeup? Just purple. your day life. Purple. What about purple? I don't know. I I love like I love the color. It's one of my favorites, but I don't honestly wear that much purple ever like in my makeup. Sometimes in my clothes, but definitely not in my makeup. Hmm. Wow. That's that's so interesting. Hey, I feel like you'd look great in purple. We're about to find out maybe. 
Um, she has okay. looked, I've done her makeup in purple and she looks divine. Yeah. All right, so there's purple. There's there's one color we fear to wear. Alby, what about you? Uh, you know, I love, love, love the color orange, mm. but it scares me a little bit. I don't want to look like a traffic cone. I love it in, you know, furniture. I love it in clothing. But like, when it comes to, I don't know, when it comes to my clothes, I can appreciate the clothes on other people. But on me, I feel like I look like a traffic cone, like I said, and I don't, mm -mm, I'm not here for it, honey. Orange is a funny color. <laughs> I love it though. It's so great. Cool. But we are getting, we've got another orange in the comment section. Somebody's also afraid of wearing orange. Who knows, orangey. Hey. <laughs> we've, got orange. we've got red, we've Ooh. got army green, we've got yellow. Um, yeah, I, I would say probably for myself, like yellow or just kind of beige. <laughs> Anything that's really close to my skin color makes me nervous about how it's gonna end up at the end. Make it. Huh? If you wear clothes that are like close to your skin color, you end up looking naked. Yeah, yeah, and then everything's just kind of a wash. I don't know. I don't. You know so I, I I'm, gonna, I'm gonna interrupt for two seconds. I would yeah. love to take purple. Why the heck not? Hey, purple. All right. Is my inspiration. Boom, chaka laka, boom, boom. Here we go. There we go. There we go. If you're if you're doing the challenge at home, go ahead and just pick a color that we're afraid to wear, and we're just gonna base our whole look in that. Albi, you've got purple. Anushka, what what, what are you? What sounds good to you? Hmm, thinking about the challenge here. We've got blue, brown, purple. No, I'll take the purple. Beige, oh Lord, yellow. Um, I'm between blue and yellow, I can't decide. All right, um, I, if you have yellow, if, uh, well actually, well either of those, because there's like brown and red and green coming in, like I can, I can work with whatever else there is, so it's up to you. Okay, then I'm gonna do blue, why not? All right. So you're blue. And then in that case, I'll take, um, oh, I guess, I guess red, I guess I'll take red. I'm going to, I'm going to be a, a scary, a scary red witch. All right, here we go. So now everybody's off. Just go ahead and get started with whatever color you have. Do the best you can until you have more information. So uh, for the next question is actually going to be for me and my witch. And uh, if you would like to choose this kind of witch, join me. But the next question is, what's one facial feature that you used to be self-conscious about, but now you love? And anybody can answer this question, whether you're doing the makeup challenge or what kind of makeup you're doing, this is for everybody. Um, I definitely think that one facial feature that I used to be self-conscious about, what do you got, LB? Uh, you know, growing up, my ears are something that I was really self-conscious of because they're different. They're not the same shape. And for a long time, I felt really ashamed of that. You know, this one's rounded and long and this one's short and like, is that a diagonal? But you know, as I got older, I realized like, you know what? I don't want to be like everybody else. Forget them, forget them. <laughs> well, I never in a million years would have noticed that, but that's so, I love that you now love your ears. You know what, that's um, the thing about um, insecurities is usually we're the only people that really notice them. It's not one of those things that, transcends uh, as many boundaries as we think in our heads. Mm, yeah. right, we're the only ones looking. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah, for me, my chin. For the longest time, I didn't like my chin. Really? I don't know why. Like, there's nothing wrong with my chin. But like, <laughs> there wasn't. I just like, I didn't like it. I, I always felt like I wanted one of those like more pronounced chins or whatever. But like, I love my chin. It's fine. Like, it works. <laughs> it does the job. It does what a chin should do. I don't know what a chin does, but it does it. <laughs> um, I love that. I love that. Um, folks at home are mentioning my ears, my eyes, also my uh, cheek, my height, my long, straight, pointy nose, uh, my giant flipping nose. I love it now. Dimples, um, all kinds of things. Eyebrows. I was going to say eyebrows for me, too. I used to like way over pluck them and try to make them disappear. Um, and I, now I, I love them. I'm so happy that they're around, um, but there we go. <laughs> All right, I have a whole lot to work with for myself um, of lips and eyes and ears, that asymmetry. I might play with that asymmetry that you were talking about, Albie, um, but let's move on. Let's give a, a question for Anishka. Um, I'll ask this so you can continue your makeup, Laura. Um, Thank you. Michi, or, I mean, this is gonna pronounce to, or pertain to you. But we're gonna ask the audience, 
who to you is the most glamorous star in all of history? It's gonna, it can transcend cultures, uh, colors, like who to you is glamorous, okay? Glam and as soon as we start to get a couple of answers up in this mug, well, you should be able to pick one of them. Okay, uh, gosh, glamour. I'll start. I love Selena. I think she is the ideal of glamour. I'm so sad she died young. I'm so excited Netflix is coming out with the series because the movie with Jennifer Lopez was not enough. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I'm going with Jill Scott. Ooh, mm -hmm. her music Scott is one of the most glamorous, like just like she's a style icon for me. Like if I if I could like have like an ounce of Jill Scott's like style and glamour, I would be happy for life. Yo, okay. Jill Scott is one of the most glamorous stars in all of history. I feel like Sophia Loren usually comes Ooh. to mind. I know, I know. Special, special human. Um, but but go ahead and weigh in, folks. Um, who who is to you the most glamorous star in all of history? We've got a we've got a Marilyn Monroe. We've got a Josephine Baker. Ooh. Oh, totally. Oh my God. Lots of fun stuff to work with. So uh, that, kudos to you for even knowing who she is because she is a real icon period, not just a beauty icon. She yeah. transcended a lot of borders. She was a French artist to, um, you know, we don't, when we think African-American and black, we don't think like French. And she was a French black person who was American born, who was the first to do what she did. And I, for those of you who don't know, if you think of like a burlesque dancer with like little spit curls in a banana skirt, that's who she is. Fire. Fire. Iconic, love that. Thank you for bringing, um, thank you for bringing Justin Baker into. We've got Audrey Hepburn, Catherine Hepburn, Ooh. Chris Hemsworth, Chris Evans, and Chris Pratt. Wow, we've got some some Chris action in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> you guys love Avengers, huh? <laughs> Robert Downey Jr., Elizabeth Taylor, oh, Adam oh, Lambert, oh, oh. Um, Jill Scott, also Beyonce. Oh, Ooh. absolutely. I mean, oh, what oh. is glamour? Oh what my God, Elizabeth Taylor. What an icon. Zendaya, um, keep them, keep them coming. But, but um, Anushka, do you have, do you, do you have what you need? <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> I'm like, oh Lord, okay, I'm going for it. I'm going for it, I'm going for it. There's a whole lot to, to kind of pick from and work from, but that's got some inspo going. All right, let's, let's, let's get a question going for you. Um, okay. So next question, what, facial feature tells you that someone is angry before they even speak What's i'm gonna i'm gonna i'll start this one off laura sorry to interrupt i'm no, gonna go. say for me it's my expression in general lord no one's gonna i can't hide it if i'm angry happy mad about something like it comes through in my <laughs> i mean like i'm very expressive which is why i need botox because Oh, this one. Oh, Lord. Look at these wrinkles. <laughs> but I would love to hear what other people say. Oh, I got wrinkles all in here. Come on now. Oh, come on now. It's not a competition, Nish. Oh, we can turn it into one. You want to? No, oh, I want to lose. We're getting timed, so. <laughs> <laughs> we can. We can do this, Albie. Don't tell uh, me what What are people saying, Laura? Um, we've, we've got, <laughs> we're, we're still getting some, some glamour stars. We've got, uh, Nicki Minaj, RuPaul, <laughs> Zac Efron. Wow. wow that, uh, oh. that's a name I haven't seen in a little while. Um, but for the anger, okay. We've got one. We've got pursed lips. Ooh, like the tightness mm -hmm. of lip. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and I feel like, I feel like for me, I feel like it's people's eyes. Like, you know how somebody can smile and you still know that they are not happy and they're angry. And I feel like that's all, that's all eye action. So that's what I would say is, the, is how you can know, um, know that somebody's angry. Um, and I think the question that's up right now, maybe a different question, um, than, than what we're, what we're talking about, but we're talking about, um, how do you know that somebody is angry before they even say a word? We've got uh, a tight jaw. People, their, people's lips or their eyebrows. Oh, yeah. You know I'm going to take eyebrows because I do that naturally and I would like to bring that to life. Hey. I would jump on that one. Oh, All right. Yeah. We've got also a nose flaring going on. Oh, um, 
but we're going to go. So now that we've all got one question to work off of, we're going to come back up and give me another question. We're really throwing our tech coordinator for a loop. Um, thanks, Kevin. Thanks, we're gonna Kevin. <laughs> um, I, but here's the question. I feel like I forgot something. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wait, wait, what? what? Is it, am I supposed to ask a question? No, you're fine. Keep going. Okay. I'm excited whenever that moment happens. No, 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 you're fine, you're fine. Um, the next question is going to feed into my makeup look. This is gonna be the last question for me. If you're following my makeup, keep on with this one. But here it is. What is one grooming or cosmetic fad that you have done that makes you laugh looking back? Oh. Like once upon a time, oh, those lashes. Um, you tried to do this thing and you look at old pictures of yourself and you think, wow, it doesn't have to be laughing maliciously. You can just laugh at yourself. Um, we're keeping and it kind like, here, people. Keeping it kind. Keeping it kind. <laughs> it's about yourself. Um, like all those years, I wore a ton of makeup and never had any eyebrows. Mm, okay, so there's a there, there's a fad. Well, were eyebrows cool for a long time? Like I don't know. Well, in the nineties, it was like really, really tiny, non-existent eyebrows. Mm, mm. So that's my excuse, and I'm sticking to it. Hey. Oh, the other one was only wearing eyeliner. Um, because that's what I thought was like how you wore makeup or like how you wore lipstick. And it wasn't until I got to college and somebody was like, um, are you going to fill those lips in? And, and I honestly was confused. Like, wait, oh. I thought you just wore dark, like dark lip liner and put on some Carmex and called it a party. Hey, over here. it's a look. It's a look. All right. There's a look <laughs> that you've got. Um, somebody <laughs> said cutting my sideburns as a teen. Ooh, just like letting uh. them disappear. Yeah. yeah. Sounds easy. Yeah. Um, a spiral perm. Ooh, Ooh, I love me a good yeah. perm. I'm, you know, my mom always got perms, but left the bangs straight, and it always drove me crazy. She'd get oh. a we couldn't afford real perms, so we'd go to the um, beauty uh, schools, mm. and she'd in the car, and we'd get high off the, <laughs> off the perm smell in the car. <laughs> But oh, not her bangs, not her bangs, just the bangs. rest. Anything but the bangs. Anything but the bangs. Mm -hmm. mm. I, uh, I definitely had the side bangs that I straightened and I had all the rest still curly. And I also er erased the eyebrows, just like let them, let them kind of disappear. And looking back, I'm just wondering if what I looked in a mirror after that, you know? <laughs> like, you know, I the fads are a funny thing because you like, you do them because everyone else is doing them, but it doesn't mean that they necessarily fit you. And I think we all forget that. Mm. Well, and there's um, also that desire to kind of want to fit in, right? That that if you can somehow pull off the fad, then maybe somehow that puts you like, like connects you with other people that maybe you want to be connecting with. Yeah, yeah, no, I feel that. Gives you an identity, you know? Yeah. We've got somebody saying that they wore bright red lipstick in elementary school. Oh, hey -o. Hey, that's a move. A that's flat amazing. top crew cut. Ooh. Oh, I had that too. Bless you. I understand the struggle. <laughs> we got some, uh, <laughs> huh? The, the flat top crew cut. Uh, somebody said my mother permed the top of my hair, kept the rest straight, and then permed the ends like a poodle. <laughs> that is iconic. <laughs> that is um, awesome. So much pink blush. Somebody shaved their eyebrows off. Uh, a lot of teeny weeny, teeny, teeny weeny eyebrows. All of it. Bronzer that just looks like dirt on my face. <laughs> yeah. Lots of good stuff. And this is actually one that's going to go for me. So um, since I've already tried to make my eyebrows asymmetrical to play into that insecurity thing, I won't use the eyebrows. Okay, but so I let me ask you, Lois, you can jump in. What's mm -hmm. one grooming or cosmetic? fad that you have done that makes you laugh now looking back grooming or cosmetic fad wait that's the same one that's the same one. Oh, oopsies <laughs> what, what, i'm sorry what's one facial feature you used to be self-conscious about but now you're you know you love it and you're okay with it oh wait wait hang on hang on i think <laughs> because I, I should have reordered these questions so that it'd be easier to follow them but it, it's the under under honest guys it's if you could only use one facial grooming tool that one that one. Thank you. If you could only use one facial grooming tool, what would it be? Mascara. Mascara? Yeah. Red lipstick. 
Hey. Uh, moisturizer. Mm. Oh, dang, sunscreen. Hey. Oh. Love that. Love that. Um, yeah, I used to always like watch when people would say sunscreen in the magazine where they're asked that question. And then, and now I kind of get it now that it's like, oh man, <laughs> things change without sunscreen. <laughs> <laughs> I was, you know, uh, I get older. I feel like it was a good summer because I went through a whole tube of sunscreen. Wow. Good for you. Oh my gosh. That's, that's, that's a real accomplishment. That's yeah, one way to measure that time too, which is really right. cool. Was I outside? Was I living my best life? Or was I just like avoiding the world? Remember when you did my makeup, Albie, for the music video and you were like, your face is a lighter color than, <laughs> than your skin. I was like, that's because I've been very religious about applying. Sure. That's a good problem to have. Everybody at home, wear sunscreen. You right. can always keep your face a little bit darker. You can't take the wrinkles away. Yeah. Wear sunscreen. Wear sunscreen. Sunscreen. And red lipstick. Sunscreen. Wear sunscreen and red lipstick and you're good. Oh. <laughs> hey, that's a good one. Um, folks are mentioning that somebody shaved their head bald. I'll say that that's a look. I've done that. It's it's a. I love that. Um, Especially like on a woman. I think there's nothing sexier because women rely on their hair to make them look and feel beautiful. I think when a woman takes the jump and the leap to be bald, it frees a lot of that pressure, societal pressure up to rely on hair to be beautiful, that it all becomes face. And I love a good face. And you know what? Most people, all people have a good face. We just are not told that we have good face. And you know, if we were told that more, then we would be less apprehensive about being bald. Mm -hmm. I feel that. I, uh, there, there was a time when I, I got to see, um, like a lot, uh, multiple women, like go decide to shave their head. Um, and everybody had a different, a different face, different skin, different hair, different body type, different, like everything. And we were, and everyone was just kind of like, well, I guess, uh, we're just kind of agree, uh, accepting that we might look kind of funny for a while, but the point is to know what this feels like to, to, to lose your hair. But every single time, one by one, when somebody lost their hair, it was like their whole face was opening up and it was beautiful. It was so generous, like, you know, everybody. And there was, there was nobody for whom it was like, Ugh. it was like, oh, it's just so beautiful. We can see your face. There's hey. power in a kind of thing like that, like releasing your standard of what you think beauty is. And this relates to makeup directly and doing what makes you feel good. You know, mm -hmm. and sometimes it's not the fat, sometimes it's, something no one else is doing. And I think that's okay. And I think we're not told that that's okay enough, but it is. Mm. Mm. Um, so we've got, we've got that, that fun thing looking back, although the, the, the facial grooming tool, which um, Anushka, this, this will feed into your, your witch. Um, the thing that people would, would not live without is mascara, eyeliner, um, tweezer, <laughs> tweezers, a comb, an adjustable height beard trimmer. Eyeliner. Hey. Scissors, mascara, lots of good stuff. Somebody got that, the hair coloring that makes your hair orange. Oh my God, hey. just for man. That's what that I'm does. <laughs> We're talking about <laughs> <laughs> Well, do you, do you have every, something that you wanna, you wanna work off of, Anishka? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go with eyeliner because I love it. Hey, I love it too. Yes. I'm falling behind, but that's okay because we have a little bit of time. Like you don't have to just use eyeliner for eyeliner. Like since I'm a witch, I'm going to draw on stuff with my eyeliner. Mm, hey, look at that. I love that. Um, so now we are almost to the end of our questions and then we can just keep talking through how we're, how we're making our witches. So the last question is from their face only. How do you know which character is the villain in a TV show? Just based off of their face, what what do they features? They always have like really skinny um, mustaches. <laughs> yeah, like a little swirly. True. <laughs> mustaches. Love that. I totally feel that. I feel like um, maybe also eyebrows, like downturned eyebrows. You know. Oh yeah. Yes. Definitely angular, not very soft and not, not a lot of pinks, not a lot of soft features, but more 
darker colors. I would say like like smoky eye and that kind of thing usually. Mm, yeah, yeah. Um, go ahead and weigh in. We'll see what what uh, and that's for you, Abby. Um, oh. What that becomes. But now we're at, at a moment where I feel like there's there's so there's so much that we could do. There's so many different ways that the answers to these questions could feed into um, all of our makeups. We've got, we've got a unibrow coming in, by the way. Albie, I don't know if that's- Ooh, You know what? I'm gonna take that. I love a good unibrow. <laughs> <laughs> Albie loves a good unibrow. <laughs> hey. And somebody said they also usually have thin faces. That's interesting, kind of gaunt. Ooh, I'll use that too. I'll like suck my face up. Why the heck not? Okay. okay. So we have um so now we have all of all of the information and if uh and oh somebody also said almost all the Disney villains have purple eyeshadow. Purple! I chose right. Purple. Um so uh we now at this point, now that we have all the questions, I'm so grateful that we now just have a minute to just talk about what we're doing and focus on our makeup until the timer ends, which Kevin on high is going to set up for us we're gonna have five minutes from now oh god finish our looks yeah have five more yeah. minutes yeah Bring it. but i need it <laughs> um okay. so, yeah so ah! okay okay we've got this we've got this let's just paint and, ch and chill and talk then i will say like though i gotta say like when people find out that i do this for a living they have an idea of what it is you know like and sure part of my job is transforming people so they look like a completely different person absolutely right yeah because if they're supposed to be a witch or something like you are taking stereotypes like we're talking about and you amplify them uh to help the audience better understand what's going on but real life going back to perception versus reality i don't believe personally in a lot um i believe that you should do what makes you feel good about yourself Mm -hmm. And some for some people, it is a lot. And for other people, it's putting mascara on, you know? So you have to be careful with your boundaries and respect other people's boundaries of what that means. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. mostly it's just following your instinct and, you know, staying true to who you are. And that's okay. And I don't think we hear that enough. I think, you know, trends are not for everybody. Some trends look amazing on people and other trends look like a hot mess. <laughs> on other people and you know like we need to remember that makeup is a tool to make us feel better about ourselves or to have fun with um it's not something we use to make people feel bad about themselves and i think that because now our you know everything's so based on cells and stuff like that people feel they Three need all these, these things that they really don't mm. is that, yeah. is that, who is that? Is Kevin, that Kevin was that you Ooh, I think, I don't know if your sound is coming upstream super loud, but I, I noticed that we have a little under three minutes to finish our looks. Um, ah! Ah! Okay, I'll be, I need your help. I need your professional help right now because I got my, I tried to make a pointy nose because somebody was talking about the pointy nose thing. I don't know if it really did it's okay. the thing. Whatever it's you okay. did is fine. You're just gonna go in with a really light color and you're gonna, you know what? I'll do it with you. How about that? Let, hey. Let's just a learning curve for everybody. So you're going to take a really light color. I'm going to be really exaggerative and take a white. Okay. And as you go down, you're going to make it really, really fine. Uh, oh, right. Like getting more slender as it goes down. Yep. Okay. So there's my, there's my homage to a pointy nose. And I wanted also to, to, um, for the grooming or cosmetic fad, there was a whole lot of talk about eyebrows and hair. Oh, I know what I can do. There was a whole lot of talk about hair and I was just trying to think about what can I do? I could just take my hair out and shake it a whole bunch. Then maybe it'll start to look perm adjacent. Maybe, let's see. Mm -hmm. well, in this lighting, I'm gonna have to contour more so you can see it, but yeah, it's just starting off a lot more uh, this way, thicker, and then it's going down a little skinnier. You know, like, so we're going to leave uh, real life for a little bit and talk about theater. You know, in theater, we're given this really wonderful thing called a script. And we have so many clues that tell us a lot about people. Again, unfortunately, they're based off stereotypes, but sometimes stereotypes help 
people understand, you know, about other people that they don't always hear about. So, for example, someone who can afford a lot of makeup might have Kylie Jenner cosmetics and have the Kylie Jenner lips and the really full brows that are in trend and a cat eye and, you know, that's great and wonderful. But the average person <laughs> may not have access to or money for those kinds of things and that's okay. And I think if we just, especially now that we're in a pandemic, have a little bit of grace. 30 seconds. Ah, <laughs> Kevin, you're killing me. A little bit of grace. I love that. A little bit of grace. In then we'll realize, you know, oh God, I need a mole. I feel like Dylan's having a mole. Oh I know. I added a mole. Help, help. <laughs> Someone says that I need Ten, to tease my hair. Nine, oh God. eight, oh. seven, my six, brush. five, four, three, two, one. Time's up. All right. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So here's here's our here are our finished witch looks based on our personalities. Let's um let's go ahead and, and vogue to some music, some posing for, for the music for a minute, well, and then we'll talk about always. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's take it. All the amazing poses with our with our looks. All right, all right, very, very nice. Um, Alby, Alby, what what was that like to be doing your makeup according to the prompts that other people were giving you? And tell us a little bit about who your witch was. You know, to be honest, a little bit uncomfortable because you know we like what we like and we don't like to you know di be dictated by what other people say. But I got the witch that we were asking the questions for was going to be like the villainous witch. So hence the color you didn't like, purple, the really overly arched eyebrows, um, a little bit of a pursed lip, a mole, which is not always considered beautiful. Um, Ta-da! I didn't even get to put lashes on. This is the worst time in my life. <laughs> I'll be basically naked right now because he's not wearing lashes. Oh my God. And folks are, folks are saying like, such gorgeous makeup. Love it, Alby. You know, like you're, <laughs> and here you, you are. Like, <laughs> amazing. Tell it, can you tell us which, which of the features you got from folks and how you interpret um, I get the arched eyebrows. Uh, subconsciously, I got the purple without realizing it. Mm. Uh, but you know, I used, when we're going back to villains, like a lot of dark colors. I used purples and a little bit of black and a little bit of a really plum pink. Um, and I think those are colors that we naturally associate with evilness, which is not necessarily cool, but it does help tell a story. Hey, all right. How, how about you, Anushka? What was it like um, to to be filling in the blanks for the diva witch, for the, you know, Sarah Jessica Parker-esque of the Hocus Pocus trio <laughs> glam kind of witch? Well, I felt like I needed to, like, kind of stay within, like, a little bit of, like, uh, like, contouring and some of the the trends and like the beauty things so like I tried to give myself like amazing cheekbones well and, done <laughs> um, <laughs> and like big old eyebrows um I went with lashes because I feel like like one of the common not denominators amongst all of those like glamorous people that were mentioned were just like those beautiful bedroom eyes, like eyelashes. These are basically just like fans that I attach to my eyeballs. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, blue was my color. So I, I stayed in that kind of cool blue kind of, you know, palette. Um, and I don't know, like when people were talking about features, I, that, I know that wasn't like maybe one of my things, but I went with it, was like, I have this like crease right here in the middle that like makes me look very stern. And um, and I didn't used to like it, but now I really love it because like my mom has it, my dad or my grandfather, her father had it. So it's kind of like I look so much like my dad's side of the family. It's one of the few things that makes me feel attached to my mom's side of the family physically. And so I like accentuated it and turned it into something. So it was a whole it was a whole thing. And then I like was given eyeliner. So I did a ton of eyeliner, but then I played with the eyeliner. I also did some eyeliner molds because why not? I mean, just it's a hot mess, but I love it. I just, <laughs> I love say, it. Uh, I I just gotta it. say, Laura, like 
to the, the fact that she's taking something that has been negative in her life, like this forehead wrinkle and making it more pronounced. To me, I didn't see wrinkles. I just saw this beautiful leaf pattern. And right under her eyes, and I know she meant for it to be a nose contour, it looks like she put more bags and bags under her eyes because it's blue, but it's beautiful. It's like feathered out and it's different. And like, and I know the moles are meant to be probably like weird, but I think they're gorgeous too. Mm -hmm. I actually really like the blue lip. Oh, yeah. yeah. And look at that. I, so, so Albi, you were purple and Anishka, you were, you were blue and I was red. These are all the colors that people said that they're, they're kind of afraid of, of wearing on their, on their face or on their person. Um, my witch was, was the misunderstood witch, kind of like the one that, that isn't supposed to be real cute looking, <laughs> but is probably really nice. It maybe has a great personality or something. Um, and, uh, and so the facial features that people were talking about where they were self-conscious about, um, like I took, there were a lot of eyebrows and, and Albie mentioned the, the asymmetry of, of your ears. And so I tried to like play up the eyebrows and asymmetricalize them, but I, I didn't. Thought, you know, brows are sisters or Never. no, they're cousins, not even sisters. So the fact, like, I love it. I think it's fun. And, you know, actually, especially Nishi, people naturally have one. Oh, you can't tell because my eyebrows are covered. They naturally have one eyebrow, like arched up especially when they talk it's like a confidence thing so it's not a negative thing like people try to make it be you know what i mean i think it's super awesome and i love your super flush cheek thanks that was you know i got the color red that i was working with and i had red lipstick to to play with um that red red lipstick from elementary school uh <laughs> bringing it out and some hair stuff but i it was it was really there was a lot going on. So I feel like I'm so inspired by the looks that you you both have put together to kind of, um, we started off with this story, this framework of these three distinct witches with these three kind of Halloween trope personalities, the stereotypes of witches um, and using these questions and people's uh, perspectives to fill them in. And if you were doing your makeup too, even if you were working with all of the same prompts, I bet that your, your idea of a witch that's a diva uh, probably looked different than Anishka's and your your idea um, of of a witch who's especially especially scary and evil probably ended up looking different from Albie's, you know. So um, so thank you for 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 filling in the Mad Lib together with us in the way that it played out on our faces this evening. If you did do your makeup, go ahead and send us a picture of it and we'd love to feature it next week. So um, so if you do that, go. you can either send it to us or you can uh, post it and tag us on either Facebook or Instagram. The handle is right up there on screen and, uh, and we'd love to see it. And if you share it, just make sure that we have permission to, to, to share it also. Um, but thank Laura, you so I'm much. Gonna piggyback, I'm gonna piggyback really quickly off what you're saying for two seconds. I know we have one more question, but um, I think this is what's, what makes this exercise so powerful is what one person may find scary, overly empowering as a diva, you know, uh, misunderstood. I think that's the things that make us who we are. And I think we should be encouraged more often to follow our hearts, be who we are, it doesn't matter if people get it or not. Makeup is just makeup. You can take it off at the end of the day. You're born with the features you're born with and you're perfect the way you are. And I don't think that we're told that enough in our society. And as a professional makeup artist who does this for a living, I need whoever is watching to hear that. You're perfect the way you are. Amen. The features are what they are. If you would like to enhance, that's one thing. But I'm only into the, the idea of changing and making you look different for a role intentionally. In real life, we should just really be proud that we're alive and that we're able to even have a discussion <laughs> of beauty and makeup during Halloween. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for bringing us this this theme in this really fun medium artistic form to play with this theme. Um, and and you both are really amazing figures in the San Diego art scene. So I want to ask you the question that we ask every one of the artists and you watching at home are also more than welcome to answer these questions also in the in the comment section for yourself. But the question is, how do you define the San Diego arts community, and what is your greatest wish? for the San Diego mm -hmm. arts community? I'll go first because I was, I'm in the talking mood. Uh, <laughs> um, I would define the San Diego arts community as diverse and eclectic. And I think 
that's what makes it powerful and different, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we are a box of crayons. There's so many different layers and colors to us and we should utilize that strength and continue to be individuals. My goal for the San Diego Arts community is that we continue to add more colors of crayons to the box, if you will. You know, like we need to continue to like, we may not agree with everyone's opinion, like voting, but it's important that everyone vote, right? And you know, the same thing transcends everything else. You may not agree with someone else and that's okay. What's important is that you're willing to have a civilized conversation about it to help us move on and grow as people. Hey, thank you. Thank you for your response. Anishka, what would you say? How do you define the San Diego arts community and what's your greatest wish for it? Well, I kind of want to piggyback on what Albie said. And, and for me, it's the, the duality of, of being on the border and having access to two different countries so, so readily. And the binational aspect of, of um, our lives here in, in the San Diego Tijuana region. And I know for me as an artist, I probably would have left San Diego a long time ago if I wasn't like working and experiencing art on both sides of the border, just because otherwise it can be kind of small, the community, it can feel a little bit limiting sometimes. And, but then when I was like, wait, well, I can just like cross the border and go into Tijuana and have access to this whole other world and country and then bring that back into the US and then create this whole like exchange. Um, that's when it just totally opened up the world for me um, as an artist, like, and, and allowed me to stay here and allowed me to continue making art here. And every project I do is influenced by that. Half my, half the ensemble that I perform with, um, I know them from Tijuana and it just influences every part of our life, classical opera, whatever it is, like it's, it's there. And I think that's an incredible um, feature and advantage of San Diego and the art scene here. And I think the one thing I wish is that the border wasn't so um, so divisive. I wish that our I wish that the border wasn't this like strict line that kept these two communities apart and the artists who don't have the right kind of papers who can't cross, et cetera, et cetera. Like I wish we could have more fluid um, exchange um, amongst artists and amongst you know citizens on both sides of the border without it having to be this like really harsh line that's hard to cross. Mm. What about you, Laura? Oh, for me? Oh, gosh. Oh, come on. Yeah. If it's sharing time, let us know, girl. <laughs> no, we, 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 okay, okay. To, today, in this moment, I feel like it would, might change every day, but I feel like I define um, the San Diego arts community um, kind of as myself, you know? Like, I, I show up to the community, I participate in the community, and therefore I define it with all the different parts of my identity. Um, and so, and so, that means that I define the San Diego arts community as uh, as 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 a as a, as, as a child of uh, an, a, of an immigrant and uh, Middle Eastern and LGBTQ. You know, like that's that's just how I would define the San Diego arts community. Because <laughs> like I'm I'm here and I'm in it, so it's like me. <laughs> and I feel like anybody could define it. Um, in that way with just all the different parts of their identity. I feel like we get to define the communities that we show up to um, and participate in. So, so yeah, I'm so happy that I we got that. to have, hey, I'm, and, that, and that's why I love this show is that there's so many artists coming on who define the arts community in so many different ways with different art forms and different themes that they're bringing that they think are so vital and important to explore. So thank you for bringing this one. <laughs> oh, one more little tiny, tiny thing and I promise I'll be done afterwards. Do it, do it. <laughs> um, we have such ideals. Uh, standards of beauty in our heads that we forget to be kind sometimes. I just want to remind everyone who's watching that, you know, you may not agree with people's makeup choices, but makeup is a form of expression. And people are always going through things that we don't always realize or understand. So remember that before you say something out loud, that's unkind because you don't always know the battle someone's struggling with. True. Thank you, Albie, for all of our perception versus reality. Mm -hmm. Drop drops of knowledge this whole hour. Um, I'm so grateful so that I got to have both of you back again this week and we got to go all the way through to celebrate Halloween. Hey. And if you're watching, <laughs> I hope that you also check out next week. We're gonna explore the storytelling art form of children's books. We have the incredible Beatriz Zamora who's gonna come here and we're gonna mad lib up 
a children's book and I am so excited. It's a beautiful story about the history of Chicano Park. Please join us next week, same time, same place. But in the meantime, thank you again so much, Albi and Anishka for no. being here and for being you. This has been so I wait, the pictures that are people post. Huh? Oh yeah, 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 tag us. <laughs> Don't forget to tag us, please post pictures. <laughs> I wanna Happy Halloween all. Have a great weekend. Bye.